your decision to take your very young family at that time to Brazil to um, in, increase your footballing education, to expand your horizons. You did not go with the impact to Major League Soccer. Instead, you went to Brazil. And everything that I've read, it was an absolute trip. You and this young family get on a plane to Sao Paulo. What was that like, Mark, at that time? And what went into that decision? And what was your initial reaction when you landed in Brazil? First, we didn't have a, a, a visa, a work visa, right? So the process of the work, work visa was done while we were there. Uh, so I had the period that I had to wait before starting the work. Um, but I saw the power of, of, of big clubs in Brazil. Uh, I remember when we arrived, the airport was absolutely packed that day for some reason. And there's these two guys with the, the, the jacket of Palmeiras. Palmeiras is, it's huge. It's a level of club. When you talk Palmeiras, you talk Boca Junior, the River Plate, Corinthians, Flamingo. It's it's a big club in South America. And you arrive, you see these two guys grabbing your stuff, your family. You're going in a van to your apartment. They give you the, the keys of your apartment. And you say, wow, I'm coaching youth here. I'm coaching youth. I'm not coaching the first team. So already there, I felt this is serious, but I'll tell you one thing. The experience in Brazil was understanding what soccer means to a nation. And you, I can't compare it. Some people ask me, it's like Canada in hockey. No, it's not even close. It's not even like foot, what football, what soccer is to Portugal or, or England or Italy. Brazil is the next level. Brazil is they actually banks they close early earlier when the national team plays things stop the passion everybody talks about the game everybody knows the players so i was seen as the portuguese canadian guy but that coached in canada that was going to teach the young players how to play soccer they probably didn't like that too much did oh. they no, I, it was, today I could say it clearly, sometimes I, fade, I felt like racial things, unfair, uh, and I also felt a lot, a little bit of bullying to some extent, you know, I remember an article in a newspaper that had a donkey, and I didn't, I hadn't coached one game, so not even one opportunity, and there was a donkey that wrote and it was writing in a board one plus one equals three and the title was uh, Palmeiras Sires a Canadian coach to coach in their academy and you read that and you say I didn't even have one training session or one game so and, and this is happening at the youth level so or, or I say that to a lot of youth coaches we're very comfortable in North America in the youth game. And maybe, maybe this is me being hard. Maybe that's one of our problems. Is that simply there isn't enough adversity? Is that, is that what you're getting at? Like, yeah, you can't, because you can't compare a kid of 15 years old that plays for Palmeiras and a kid of 15 years old that plays for any club in, in, in North America, any youth club. You can't even compare the level of pressure. It's, it's night and day. It's, you can't compare it. And, and you must have been, for all those reasons, you must have been feeling it as well. I mean, I, I read stories about horses on the field, about the difference between some of those big clubs and smaller clubs in Brazil. I mean, it, it, it must have been difficult to navigate originally in order to kind of prove yourself when you're even facing adversity when you're on the ground level there. Yeah, look, I, 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 I rem with, with Palmeiras, I think in 50 games, I think we lost three games. Wow. And we, I was under pressure a lot of time. But people have to understand the concept here. I'm coaching the U16 team. I'm not coaching the first, it's the U16 team. And I felt there was chances of me getting sacked two, three times at the youth level. And then we go into the final 20. We end up winning the Brazilian championship in penalty shots in the final against Vasco da Gama. And it's the first time I cried winning a trophy. 
I didn't cry when we won USL. I didn't cry in ASL. I didn't cry arriving at the final with Swol. None of that. I, emotionally, I'm controlled. Palmeiras, I cried. It's the the moment where I, I feel like cracked because of so much pressure all the time. And I look. I there's a story of a Portuguese coach now that is Jorge Jesus at Flamengo. And for him to have the confidence of the media and everybody from Brazil, he had to do results with Flamengo that are unique today. And now he won Libertadores and now he's very accepted in the country, but he had to be incredible to be accepted. It's hard for a, a foreign coach in a country that say that they won five times the World Cup. They kind of reinvented the game. So why would they need help? So that's a little bit the view of many people over there, unfortunately. When you were there, I mean, could you pinpoint top talent when you played it? I know that you managed against Marquinhos. I'm not sure what other players that, that, that our viewers may be aware of. Gabriel Jesus was a U14 player in, in Palmeiras. Did you know it right away? Like, do you know it at that age? How good they are? He was the best one at that level, yes. He was the best one, but can you see that he would become at 14 starter for Brazil and play for Man City? No, it's very hard. Uh, some you see, but Mar Marquinhos, when we played the Copa São Paulo, for me was the best player in the Copa São Paulo. Hmm. I remember him small with braces, shaved head, very skinny. And I remember the first time I saw him, I said I saw him with the number four, the captain of the Corinthians, and I thought to myself, he can't be a center back, like in my head. But then when the game started, I was impressed. The guy was an animal, fast, good in the air, very good defensively. Uh, in other players, my, my goalkeeper though at Palmeiras that made us win the Brazilian championship, Daniel Vincent. I saw it right away. This guy's going to play Champions League. Uh, today is one of the goalkeepers of Rome in Italy. But he was very different than everybody. A huge leader, good with his feet, uh, very special already at his age. Uh, you mentioned it earlier, before, before we get back to North America. Um, how did your family react to the move? Because you have young kids, you have three kids, your wife, like you said, I mean, she's a true hero in the story that you're writing, writing because obviously, you know, your coaching um, almost takes precedent over a lot of other things that are happening in your life. I, yeah, I'm aware of that. And I feel it's, um, it's a little bit unfair, right? But it's a part of my life that I have to manage and try to be the best I can. But of course, that when you coach at that level, it, it, it looks selfish because your family has to be ready for, for some sacrifices. Mary was very excited about going to Brazil to the point that it was so new. Sao Paulo is a fantastic city, great weather. Uh, we went there two years or three years before the World Cup, right? So all the buzz and build going towards the World Cup was fantastic uh, to the point that when I decided that it was better for us to go to, back to North America, that was a hard blow on my wife, especially not on my kids because they were so small that sure. But I think John Pugh convinced me. John Pugh convinced me it was a good time to go to Ottawa to build the NASL team from scratch. And I wanted to give more security to my family um, because Brazil is very insecure and it's, Brazil is the record on firing coaches, right? The, sure. the coach spends one month in a club and it's a lot. So uh, I wanted to give that security to my family. You, you're, you're right. You built that Ottawa team from scratch. You won an NA, NASL fall championship. But is there any part of you that in the back of your head saying, what could have happened if I stayed in Brazil? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I think about that. I, I think I, I would have reached the first division. I'm sure I would, and I, my my name was getting good in the youth level. Uh, like I, I know I would have been able to be in U20 coach of big clubs, uh, but uh, sometimes I think about it, yes. Look, I'll tell you this, if I didn't have family, 
I would still probably be in Brazil. Incredible. I want. I, I can't think only about myself and you always have to see the full package of everything.